All right, Reno Johnny, uh, we do this every single week. We call this segment Let's Parlay. It's time for Let's Parlay. All right, Wes is having fun. Uh, you know, he's celebrating because he he might have uh, drawn a million dollars off of these real estate, you know, things that he's doing. I don't know what's going on. I love Wes. I love Wes. I love Wes. No, he's happy. He's drinking. He's having a good time. I love him. Anyways, uh, Reno Johnny, how, how are you doing, man? Everything good? No, we're doing good here, man. Uh, football season, fish the kind of started for us. So let's, uh, yeah, middle school. I'm a OC for the uh, JV team and the running backs for the varsity team. So we got, we're kind of got a full slate here. Um, still gambling. Um, I, I was listening to your y'all's conversation. It's kind of crazy because I think most conferences and, and in a couple of years now, all conferences going to be, it's going to be player to, to coach communication. So signs yeah. are going to be, you're not going to see this, th- those, which I always thought was pretty cool in college football, the, the big old cardboard signs. Yeah. And, and so that's going to be gone. It's, it's trickling down. Like I could see high school. They have the capability they, that we have in high. They give it to us in high school. Our conference doesn't allow it, but I think we're pretty close in general to like to being able to. Everybody is going to have it, you know, all the way down to middle school, high school. It's going to be kind of wild. Well, I will say this. Uh, it's. I thought that documentary is, is to me, it was just a worthless thing what they did to Connor Stallions. Okay. I, I just, I, as if I'm not even a Wolverines fan, but what they did to that kid, that kid fought, that guy fought in wars. He was a captain. He did all these, these great things and what they did to him and what the Wolverines did to him after the fact, after he stood for, that, that's know, what they do. Those jabronis up North, they're a bunch of losers. Oh. O-H-I-O. <laughs> well, there he goes. I mean, we'll see, uh, calls them a bunch of losers, but uh, I'm, I'm sure Ohio State knew something about it. I believe, I believe that there was a backroom deal made, right? And I believe that Connor Stallions got paid handsomely for what he did. If he did anything, I believe like you were gotta be our fall guy. And that's what it's gonna be moving forward. And he's a Michigan man through and through. And he said, I'll be your fall guy. I really believe that just because of the way everything kind of trickled down. They kind of went to him like we need a fall guy or the program, you know, could suffer. So he became the fall guy. I believe that whether or not at the he's end of the fighting, day, I'll tell you, he's fighting right now. Because why would you be the fall guy when you want to be a coach in the NCAA? If he's the fall guy, he'll never coach in the NCAA. I haven't seen any of the series, but I, I just struggle to high school? Under, I, I just struggle to understand that what he did is an egregious infraction. It's been going on in college football forever, Wes. What are you talking about? That's that's what I'm saying. I agree with you. I struggle to understand why this is a terrible infraction. I agree. And and, and you're going to roll off wins? Like, they still won the game on the field. There's nothing Connor Stallions did that helped a receiver catch a ball or a lineman make a block. It, it Like, it's no different than Reggie Bush. He it, it, The money that his family collected had nothing to do with what that man did on the field. It, these are, like, the NC2A and the way that they go about things is really weird. And it serves, it almost serves no purpose. John, answer your question. I think, yeah, he's coaching some high school team in Detroit now or something like that. Yeah, well, yeah. I believe they all do it. I believe Ryan Day's fat ass was doing it. He just wasn't as good at doing it. And he got mad that Michigan was doing it better. And he ran him out. They all do it. They all do it. They all do it. Now, is it wrong? It's like the Astros. Is it wrong? Yeah, it's like an un, you know, but now what What? What did baseball do? All right, we're going to have pitch calm, which fails half the time anyway. They all do it. Ryan Day's got it. Ryan Day's got a nice babysitter now, though. Met, met, mess around and find out because we got Chip sitting right there. Oh yeah. And, and I'm Ryan. not complaining. Are you Ohio State fan? Yes, he is. I bleed Ohio State. My dog's name is Dobbins, Ra- bro. Ryan Day is a a fat piece of shit. First off, <laughs> I remember. I remember when they bro. beat like Notre Dame, and he got out there like it's us against the world. Like shut the hell up. Half of the Ohio State fans have never even set foot in Ohio. 
They're the most. They're one of the, they're, they're the Cowboys. They get bandwagon fan after bandwagon fan. You're gonna sit there and tell me it's us against the world. So that, that that part of Ryan, that part of Ryan Day, I don't very much care for. But the way that he's coaching at the quarterback position is something that no Ohio State quarterback has ever done, or Ohio State coach has ever done. And I believe that he is a better recruiter and a better coach than Urban Meyer. He just hasn't. He's had to go against Harbaugh. Well, Urban Meyer had Urban Meyer always had a weird choke job midseason that cost yeah. them the opportunity to get there. Where Ryan Day gets there, and he's just he's met Georgia, he's met Clemson, didn't, like he's met historically great teams. Didn't Urban Meyer win one? Mm -hmm. say? But, yes, he did. But I, I think I think he he did, and I and and I'll be forever grateful for that. But Urban Meyer, if you look at the following season, I believe they lost a game they shouldn't have mid mid season against Michigan State with that Joey Bosa team and Zeke Elliott returning. You know, Urban Meyer had a choke job against Purdue one year. Like there was always a weird game that they lost, and there was always some Urban Meyer health related thing going on. Ryan Day just he takes them to a really big game and he just meets historically great. Urban teams. Meyer was popping too many Viagra pills. Yeah, that's hey. probably what he was doing. <laughs> no kind of strippers every weekend. It'll 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 run on you if you do that every weekend. Yeah. I, I you you really you if you you take Ryan Day's record and most fan bases would take that all day every day. Oh. I'll take all right, Urban boys. Championships. All right, boys. Let, let's uh, let's go through the let's go through our picks because uh, we have about twelve minutes. You guys ready? Let's go. All right, Wes, you're gonna go first. Johnny, you're gonna go second. We're gonna do, uh, and obviously, you get your three picks and your parlay pick, uh, which is your final pick. All right, Wes, give All us right. your. So should I, PD? Did you give my first pick earlier, or should I just move on from that? Yeah, move on. I, to I, next. Did, I did that earlier. Move on. Uh, actually, right, Johnny, let's, Johnny, you go first. Let's, let's move on. Johnny, okay. you go first because uh, he already did his first pick. Uh, yeah, I got you. Um, so strangely enough, we're going to actually be on the Ohio State Akron game, and I'm going to take the over 58 points. There's kind of a weird stat where if a team is laying. Over 40 points in a non-conference game, weeks one through three in the last few years. They're like hitting at a 70% clip, 68% clip, but like 58, 29, something kind of crazy like that. So uh, I like the over in that game. I think Ohio State's offense, as much as I hate to say, they do have good quarterback play. They got um, good weapons on the offensive side of the ball. And you might get a situation where Akron might get some, uh, some shifty kind of, you know, just – kind of you know prevent defense by Ohio State mid third quarter and just kind of uh, being able to kind of maybe get seven maybe 14 points I think Ohio State rolls them I can't lay damn near 50 points but I think both teams get on the board I think Ohio State gets on the board a lot Akron gets on the board just enough to catch the over all right Wes give us your second pick uh, I am trying to pull it up on the screen, but I am taking Florida Atlantic. Um, I am taking over 16 and a half for the game. I think they get a shot at actually winning this game. They're a 14 point dog. We're talking about Tom Herman. This is a guy that took over a, a really bad Houston roster and did great things with them. I think we all can remember is probably about seven or eight years ago. Uh, a, a Houston team that had close to nothing came out and beat Oklahoma in a week zero situation. Um, Tom Herman is a way better coach than the school he's coaching at right now. The only reason he's coaching there is because somehow he failed just like every other coach that goes to Texas does. But um, I, I, I think this team has a shot to win the game, but I am going to take Florida Atlantic over 16 and a half. That's for the entire game. They, they need 17 points for the entire game. Tom Herman has almost never not done that ever in any team he's coached. All right, Johnny, give us your number two. This might be sacrilegious, but it's still baseball season. So I do have a baseball play. Um, I like the Diamondbacks tomorrow night against the Dodgers playing Kershaw on the Hill. Zach Gallen, who hasn't been as Zach Gallen bold, but neither is Clayton Kershaw still kind of, you don't really know how much, how many innings you're going to get out of him. Uh, the three best records in the base in baseball right now, post All Star break, are the Dodgers, 
the Diamondbacks and the Padres. So that division is actually a really fun one to watch and kind of keep keep tabs on. I like the Diamondbacks offense uh, to get to Kershaw and 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 get that game. You're getting a plus one ten. Uh, again, I think the pitching matchup slightly favors the Diamondbacks, and their offense can kind of contain with the Dodgers. I'll take the the, the plus money here uh, with the home team in in the division game. Diamondbacks looking to make another surprise run to the World Series. All right, Wes, give us your number three. So this is tomorrow night, and I'm I'm taking Stanford, and I got it at nine and a half points. This this feels very uncalled for. I realize that that the Pac-12 and the abandonment and and all of that stuff that kind of went on, but Stanford always has smart players. They've never had top dollar recruits, and and really, they, I don't see them as a loser in any of this this transition away from the Pac-12. But even if I did like TCU, I would never lay this many points against Stanford. TCU has no, nothing that would make me believe that they're going to beat Stanford. And then when you look at the line movement, this line opened at 11. And I'm seeing 84% of the public wager uh, on TCU. And somehow the spread has moved to nine. So that's reverse line movement. That means that some real smart money was laid on Stanford when it was at 11. I got it at nine and a half, and that's the play I'm giving everybody. But when you see that kind of line movement, it's either the house is totally comfortable being exposed on TCU at minus 11, or the the, the house just simply wants to be on Stanford. So I, I'm taking nine and a half points. I, I'm not saying they're going to win the game, but they are not nine and a half points worse than TCU. All right, Johnny, give us your number three. So I'm actually on the same game, and I'm I'm really thinking the same type of way here. I, I did I don't understand how that much action is going in, and you know to piggyback off of what Wes is saying that they're pretty much begging for more TCU money at night, right? Because there there had to be some large sums come in on Sanford. They need more money on TCU at the nine. Uh, I got it at nine point five. I'm seeing a lot of nines now. Uh, most sports books I'm looking at, like Bet365, ESPN, Caesars, uh, DraftKings, Bally's, they're all at nine right now. Hard Rock's at nine and a half. We can get a couple nine and a half. So if you can get nine and a half, I think that's the play. They will have a chance to win um, outright. I will be playing that myself. You know, my official play for the show, take the nine and a half. I always, you know, take points. My personal plays, if I'm getting seven or more, I'll sprinkle in you know, 0.25 unit worth on the money line uh, just to kind of see if, if they can if they can cash. If not, I'll be real comfortable with 9.5. Uh, I think Sanford is one of those teams that always seems to find a way in spots where maybe nobody thinks they can win, and they'll just hang around. Even if they lose, you know, in a last-second play or field goal or whatever, comfortable with 9.5 points, I'm going to take Sanford. I, I totally agree with everything Wes said on that game. Uh, it's one of my my favorite plays that, that I'm going to be giving out this weekend. By the way, FAU, Carl, is playing Michigan State. So you want to know who they're playing? They're playing Michigan State and, on on Friday. So tomorrow. And they're, and they're in Lansing. Uh -huh. All right. Wes, give us your final pick of the night. I can't help myself. So you're getting two. You're getting um, – I'm taking South Carolina. I love Beamer. I think that, that – Laying this many points is not something that I like to do, but I think South Carolina at home in this situation midday, I, I got it at 20 and a half, and I think that that's a gift. It's Hanukkah, it's Christmas, it's all in one. Like I, I, I love the roster of South Carolina. There's so much that's made of what is going on in the SEC and buying players, and South Carolina is just picking up the loose pieces of good four stars that, that just – couldn't get paid at a place like Bama or LSU. I think that this is a gift. Uh, Old Dominion doesn't even belong in this game. Um, so official pick, minus 20 and a half South Carolina. This is also reverse line movement. Again, the, it opened at 17, um, and all of this public money is on, on ODU, yet the 72% of the public is on Old Dominion, and then we're seeing the line move to 21. 
Um, I, I think South Carolina is good for at least 25. And then the other bonus pick that I'm going to give, and I'm not going to break it down too terribly, but I love Florida. I love Florida to just 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 smack Miami around and win money line. Florida is a dog at home. What a disrespectful money. What a disrespectful line that is. All right, Johnny, give us your final pick. Spank so, uh, big Mountain West guy. If you haven't if you haven't followed me for a while, big Mountain West guy. Uh, Nevada's terrible. We get that, but there's a team in that conference that has real potential. One to join a bigger conference here in the next few years. And two, to make their first uh, college football playoff at a chance for a title. And that's Boise State. Look, I remember back when Boise State, you know, was really good under, with Kellen Moore. And there was like the, the BCS there. Like they, I believe they should have had an opportunity to play for a national title. They were that good. I think this year now with the expansion of 12, you know, it's, it's kind of wild because if you think about the four playoff teams, that only was 10 years. That was just 10 years before that. Hey, we got to expand. In those in that 10 year stretch, only App State won more games than Boise State without making the college football playoff. Right now, there's 12 teams. Boise State, I think the way that the format's going to work, they have a real shot at getting at being the top group of five or group of four, whatever they call it now, uh, the top seeded team in that group. I think they they did lose their quarterback last year. I think he took off to Arkansas, I believe, is where he transferred. But they get in Malachi Nelson, who was actually – I was very surprised where he went. The, the kid was originally recruited to, to USC, and then they, he was able to – you know, Boise State was able to call him to Boise. I think he actually has better legs than their quarterback from last year. I think they are in real potential to – one, they're going to win this game, and they're getting two touchdowns. But I think that this is a, a kind of a, 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 a tone setter for the season – Right, because they do have college football playoff aspirations. I think if you could bet them make the college football playoff, you'd be in a good offer. That'd be a good little opportunity as well. But I will lay the 13 points with Boise State getting off on a good start, laying the 13 points, winning that game, and kind of putting themselves in position for the college football playoff. Big Boise State guy. I'm, I love Nevada, but if any team in Mountain West can get in the college football playoff, I'm going to be high on them. Well, I'm I'm excited for the tournament this year. 12 teams. Uh, fighting for that national championship game. And now, you know, teams like FSU won't get screwed. I don't care what anybody says. The Seminoles got screwed last year. I don't, I don't care. You know, maybe, but then they lose it to Georgia Tech week They one. didn't play any of their starting defensive uh, players. Half of their I guys were this year. I don't <laughs> care. They deserve, they deserve every every little ounce of that L it took in Ireland. They deserve oh, it. about the Georgia Tech game. Yeah. Uh, you, know what, you know what it is? I'm just a hater of those big programs. I really yeah. am. Those, those big programs where people are like, oh, I'm a Florida State. Shut, shut up. You're a Florida State guy. Okay. Yeah, I've been there. You know, I, I, I don't like it. I, I, I will shit on them every chance I get. I loved them missing it last so you're, you're, year. You're, you're, are, are you trying to attack me? Because I'm a Florida State fan. <laughs> are you really? Are you really? I grew up a Seminole fan. Yeah. 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 I, I just hate the big programs. I really, really do. You that. know what I, it was is I couldn't stand Miami. I couldn't stand Miami in the 90s. I couldn't stand them. And I loved Florida State because they, you know, they, they would go head to head. And I just love when they beat the hell out of each other. So I could see that. I have a, I have a buddy that's like a Miami fan. And he's oh, like, I, I just can't stand Florida State. And so he's like, it makes sense. I'm just going to hate the big programs every chance I get. Uh, Ohio okay. State, Michigan, all of them. Like Penn State, I like Penn State because they're like, they're always like the underdog between those two, you know, schools. So, I, I, I don't know. I'm just tired of the big programs. I love seeing them lose, but you're right. This new playoff, like when you think about it, right? Like how do you see out? Like, and again, things change, but do you see Alabama like ever missing it? No. Georgia ever missing it? No. Like they, they can have one, two losses and they'll still be in. So that's what the, the that's what it will do. It, it will, you know, those teams will always pretty much have a chance every year to kind of fight for a title, oh. which is, you know, good. It, it makes the regular season not like, oh, you have that one loss and you're pretty much out of it. Right. Um, but it also opens up the door for those smaller programs to so just one to kind of show that can they compete, right? Can they can they get there and meet, match up against the big boys? So it'll be interesting. The, the schedule came out. Then there's like 14, 15 days of either college football playoff game or NFL game, like within four two two weeks. It, it, Christmas time is going to be amazing. Yeah. Well. 
Well, I'm glad it'll be amazing to you. I, I can't wait for the tournament. That that I can't wait for. But the the regular season, and I know everybody loves college football. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mock it, but I uh, there are there are college games that people sit and watch, and I'm like, what the hell are you watching? I mean, like seriously, I I, I will say that about some of the NFL football games too. So I'm yeah, not gonna lie. If it's a shitty game and I'm watching it, it's, it's typically because I got I got one on the side. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like there's some games where I, I'm sitting there like, I don't even know why I'm on this game. It's a crappy game. But I'll watch every second of it. So it, it's exciting. I'm, I'm excited that it's back. It's been, you know, 200 and something days since the, the college football championship game. So it'll be exciting. The tournament, the, the, the playoff, the 12, 12 team playoffs can be great. I kind of hope to keep it at 12 teams because yeah. that's, my whole thing was they went from four, okay, five got screwed. Okay. Well, now 13 is going to get screwed. So it, it I hope I don't want, I don't want to be like, you know, 25 teams in the playoffs, you know, so, no, I don't see but it'll be fun. Reno, Johnny, thank you uh, for joining us. We'll see you next week, buddy. Next week. There he is. Reno, Johnny. Why don't we bring our, our, our next guest? Uh, we're not even going to go to a break because, uh, you know, we got uh, a little bit of time. Uh, we are now talking to eight-year NFL cornerback and current Toronto Argonauts DB coach, I yeah Isaiah Ike Charlton. Uh, Isaiah, what's up, buddy? Hey, what's going on, boss? Just a quick correction. I'm I'm not with Toronto right now. So okay, but I was with them a couple years ago. All right, so there you go, Speedy. Thank you very much. <laughs> Play Wikipedia for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Speedy, you're wrong. All right. Wikipedia's wrong. You know what we need? We need uh, Isaiah, nice we need, we need a battle. We're going to bend him over, and you got to hit him with the paddle. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> you want bring, to do that? You bring back memories, man. Bring back <laughs> memories. Don't do that to me. Well, you don't, you. You don't want to hang out with Adrian Peterson. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Spanky. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyways, I'm sorry, AP. I was just making a joke. It was just a joke. A slight one. I mean, I've been making jokes all night. Anyways, Ike, uh, how's your uh, how's your daughter doing right now? Man, she's doing good. Man, she has a little little bug, little mm. bug going. So she's been down. So you know how that goes back and forth to the drugstore. Mm. Well, I have a little bug. His name's Speedy. Right there. You see him right there. <laughs> oh, look at him. Speedy, make your bug face. I was sick. I wouldn't be here. <laughs> Don't you love him, Ike? You know, right over the head. Right over the head. Uh, so, I let's go into the NFL season. Uh, the NFL is a week away. Uh, everybody has Kansas City going all the way to the Super Bowl again and winning, uh, having a three-peat. I beg to differ. It's not easy to do that. That's why I've never seen an NFL play, team do that. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is sensational. Andy Reid is one of the greatest coaches we've ever seen. What stands out this year in the AFC more than any of the years that you have seen in the last, I, I would say, the last 10 years? Uh, the parody, the parody that's 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 in that conference, man. It's it's gonna be tough. Everybody's you know, pegging the great, you know, which is which. Hey, they earned it, so they 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 get that that nod, right? Of those guys up in Kansas City, but man, that AFC is gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough. It's not gonna be a cakewalk as everyone thinks it's gonna be. I still I still have faith in the Ravens, and the, the Browns will have something to say about it here. But uh, man, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty tough, man. It's gonna be definitely an interesting year. So, what are some of the differences you've noticed with the corner position when you have played? When you played, you played from two thousand two thousand seven, and uh, now with some of the rules, obviously the defensive rules, and also the way they're uh, developed today. Uh, just watching the corners play, these you know now, man, they they don't they're not aggressive enough. You know, they they too they don't play a lot of man coverage coming into the NFL when I was coming in. You, you earned your stripes playing man coverage. So now you get a lot of these cover two corners that come in. Some of them can't cover. And it, and it shows early on. But the ones that can do it, trust me, it, it does show. And uh, those guys like, you know, Sauce and those new guys are in, man. Those some really, really good corners, man. I, I love watching those guys. We are talking to eight-year NFL cornerback, Mr. You know, he was a coach, DP coach, I yep. Charlton. And listen, I got the DB hey, position. I, hey, I'm still coaching. Yeah, you're, I'm listen, still man. coaching. We need you. To, we need you to take Speedy and coach him, man. He has no athletic ability. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm Hey, we'll get we'll get Speedy together, man. We'll get Speedy together. 
Hey, listen, if you can get Speedy to run a 40 in 4.8, I mean, I'll I'll give you a couple Ooh. of bucks. Could you imagine Ooh. Speedy running a 4.8? Hey, that'll be something. He'll be your Huckleberry, be you know? No, I won't. Don't listen to him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ike, uh, you look at the DP position and you look at what the NFL has provided over the last couple of years, and there's one great DB here in New York right now, and that's Sauce Garner. What do you think he has changed at the corner position, and why do you think he's been so successful in the NFL? Uh, you look at his size. He's a, he's a matchup nightmare for most for most offenses, right? You know, uh, there's a situation where he can match up with pretty much anyone on, on either side of the ball, and he can play right and left side. A lot of corners. They can't flip flop and they they can't they can't move the way he moves. So with his length and his ability to play press coverage and get be aggressive, that's a that's a huge plus in the NFL. And don't just let these wide receivers just run free off the line of scrimmage. Uh, they're too skilled for that to happen. So you got to be have a guy like him that can go out there and get in your face and get hands on you early and, and, and dictate make a quarterback make a perfect throw. So one of the, te- the team you were drafted by, the Seattle Seahawks, they have a pretty rich history with the corner position as well. They have two young ones right now that are very good, but no Pete Carroll. He steps away, and now they have Mike McDonald. Uh, what are your expectations for them, their their defense this season, some of these young corners they have? Uh, they pick up where they left off last year. Uh, those those guys showed they showed a lot of promise. They showed that they have the capability of going out there and uh, shutting the offenses down. You know, now you get a new uh, another defensive mind, the head coach that comes in there that's that's what he's done. He's attacks. He's get after it. So if you can't play that press coverage, man, and that press bail, press bail stuff that they do similar to what Richard Sherman uh, used to do a long time ago. But, uh, again, looking forward to watching those young guys get after it, man, because they, they're aggressive. They feed off what, you know, and they have the right coach to uh, get them to that point. So it's, it's, it's going to be fun to watch. Ike. There's a lot of hatred of Russell Wilson. We've had Worthy on the show uh, about a week ago. What is it about Russell Wilson that everybody doesn't like? I mean, Marshawn Lynch came out. We've heard Richard Sherman come out and throw him under the bus. Everybody's throwing him under the bus now. I I, I know you know Russ. Why does everybody dislike him? Well, I don't know him personally, but I do know him. Been you know, the the thing is, is the locker room. You know, if you if you've been in the locker room. And you have a guy, a standoffish guy, who maybe he puts himself above the next, and and it, it may be some jealousy in there. Who knows? You know uh, that type of individual. He's not. I, I guess he feel he's not a likable guy, right? Someone's not really hangs out with him in the locker room. It doesn't translate to a guy that you want to go to battle for. But uh, you know, just listening to the guys that have that been in the locker room with him. Uh, they they say it all the time. Is you know he's like a standoffish person, right? He's, you know, is he is this his way or the other way, right? My locker, two lockers, own parking spaces, all those things that 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 can, you know, if it's warranted and you earned it, then yeah, you get it. But if you go into a new situation, man, you got to leave that stuff alone and, and you go in and fit into that locker room and that culture, and uh, do your best to, to to lead in that in that uh, in that way. So you uh, co- coaching obviously in Toronto versus uh, in the NFL. Two years ago, played in the CFL a little later as well with Winnipeg mm-hmm. and with, uh, with Montreal. What are some of the right. differences in the the tactics that both for the defensive back position and for the game that are different in both leagues that you that you noticed? A uh, big time difference, boss. Uh, in the CFL, is, is you're going to have situations where you a lot more man coverage than you see uh, in the NFL. Uh, the wide open field, man. You know when you got a hundred and 110 yard long field and it's and it's 65 yards wide and then you got a, a 20 yard end zone so you can get on the 10 yard line and still throw a long ball so it's it's it makes you really have to cover the whole field and and it really technique wise is a lot of like if you know if a lot of those CFL corners if they get an opportunity to go down to the states and and play some of them should have success because of the man coverage that you're gonna play on a regular basis in the CFL in, in that wide open field. And, you know, there you, you get two downs to get a first down, right? So that, so the stakes are higher and the, and the opportunities, they ramp up when you're out there doing that stuff, man. Hey, I remember those days. <laughs> nice. nice. Uh, we are talking to former eight year NFL cornerback, uh, DP coach, Ike Charlton. 
Uh, he's he, this is the first time he's been on a show. If you don't remember Ike, he's he had a very good NFL career. He was in the NFL for eight years. That's that's a good career. Most guys only play three years. He played eight. So uh, a long time. You know, one of our fans asked me asked us to ask you this question. Uh, do this. Um, would you do the seatbelt lockdown celebration like all the DBs are doing right now? Oh, I actually do it now with my 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 young my young guys that I coach at the high school level. Uh, we have a, I, we we came up with a little a little Let's seat see belt. It. Let's see. You know? it. Let's see. Well, I, I, I can't do it right now. It, it <laughs> has to be with the group, man. No, no, I can't do it. But yes, I actually we actually you know we swipe it up and then we lock it in. So most lock definitely, we are. oh yeah, you lock oh, it yeah. in. You, you gotta adapt to the times, I, man. I, I, young, I young if I if I learn the dance, I'll I'll, I'll lock it. Do you it lock in. it in your pants? Oh. You, could you lock it in your pants? I don't think it, that's involved in what he's <laughs> describing. But you gotta lock it in. No, yeah, in the way that Ike is describing, not but, the way you're describing. But you gotta lock There's it in. There's two right? different things. You gotta lock it in those pants, yeah, which is a vape. There's nothing to do with pants. No. <laughs> I I don't think you're telling your kids it has to be in your pants. No, no. Thank you. We're not. We're, 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 we're gonna leave that one alone. We're gonna leave. Yeah, that's a, yeah, leave that's it alone. Let's see the Ike. That's a hike leave it alone. Yeah. I'm hoping you're a huckleberry. No, 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 no. I'd be too if you're grabbing my boobs. <laughs> I would not do anything of the sort. So listen to Ike and don't bring up my pants. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> so back to uh, normal actual uh, com- football conversation. So actually, I want to deviate away a little bit from your experience in Canada to like off the football field as well. The city of Toronto, I've been there once uh, 10 years ago and – the culture in Canada too, the football culture and also the city culture life. What are some of the experiences you had when you were there as a player and as a coach? The, the, the atmosphere in Canada, man, is, is, is actually, it's that collegiate atmosphere where everybody gets all riled up to get that liquor in them and, oh, and it's rowdy and um, they love their football in, in, up there in, in Canada, man. And I had a great time being there. Uh, when change it, had that if I had the opportunity to go back again, I would. You know, I had a lot of fun there. They took care of me when I was there. Uh, the fans, the community, they all were great, man. And, and in CFL, it's a little different from the, from the NFL. You get to stay overnight, so you get to experience each city when you travel over there. And, and it's funny, you talk about Toronto, that was the six from being in Winnipeg and the cold and the opportunity to uh fly back east to go to Toronto. That was always a trip we uh look forward to, and we always uh. I used to stay overnight. I didn't go back on the plane, so I, I would stay and get me an extra night in. I, I think Speedy needs to hang out in Montreal, all the strip bars. I think no, be- I, oh, I, I, that's I, a, Montreal's a different animal now. That's a different animal for Speedy. I mean, he's no, never, no, no, no. We to, if you're we're going to do anywhere in Canada with the CFL, we could uh, bring Montreal. Out, no, no, we're going to go Montreal, no, regardless of where it is. We get we could bring out liquor up west. No, no, no. <laughs> we're we're going to bring you. You better. No, we're bringing liquor up west. You better bring. West will be fully on board with this. You better bring your extra underwear. You're going to need no. <laughs> west, liquor up west would be much more encouraged with that. There you go. I mean, listen, I oh. guess the first time on the show. If you if you want to go. To fans only and, and follow Speedy. Here you are, right there. You could join uh, the movement against that's it. Tough. Maybe black memory at least. <laughs> so I to put it in perspective. Uh, Wes was one of uh, our one of our betting guys that was just on before we, we brought you in. He's a, he's a great CFL better, and uh, he was on tonight after uh, drinking uh, drinking something. Uh, he had, uh, even had some shots when he was coming on, so that's why I was like, oh, wow. teach these oh, kids. He was with West. Oh, he was ready. No I, I, no, I was providing Ike with some context of why I said a liquor enough West would uh, love it in Montreal. Oh, you like to drink? I do. Well, but you know, like there's a direct city. correlation with West being the that CFL. Sleep. Listen, listen, Ike, this guy can drink you under the rug. This, this, this little guy right here. This, this 160, 170 pounds. I believe it. Guy, I believe guy, it. He's a beer drinker. I believe drink. it. I bet he don't. He cannot drink in the daytime. If he drinks in the daytime, he throws up all over. It, it's oh, a no day he's a, drinking. Nice he's no a day vampire. Drinking. No. no, I like I have to like really like like I did it like once in a baseball game. I was fine you just sitting it? down. What you did it sitting down, huh? Yeah, but oh, like okay. he takes me to these places where I'm dancing all over the place and I can't do that. <laughs> what, what, yeah, what, what's you your drink? What's your drink of choice? Oh, what's your drink? Well, no, I have I've had all different types of beer at baseball games. Like I, I'm I'm an experimentalist. Like I like to try he like, likes to experiment. Like because mm-hmm. I'm I like going to different ballparks too, like his local microbreweries and stuff like that. There, right. actually, the last time I was, um, I last year I visited some family. We were at a kind of a reunion type thing in Baltimore, and there was actually a, an IPA 
uh, named after Eddie Murray, a Hall of Fame baseball player. He actually has his own brewery. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I like to experiment with that kind of things. I like all different types of hard. He likes to grab really. chefs. That's what he likes to do. I, I like various types of hard liquor he's too. Not as much grabber. for the wine yeah, guy, he's but a chef grabber, right? What? You're a chef. Grabber. What are you talking about? <laughs> I have no idea what any of that crap means, <laughs> and why it has anything to do with me describing to Ike what type of liquors I like. <laughs> <laughs> There's no grabbing involved. Well, you have to grab the beer, right? You guys are something else, man. You guys are unless, else. unless unless a shaft is a nickname for a type of beer glass. I, I that's a, that's work. a tricky word there, buddy. A shaft. That's a tricky word. Yeah, that's a good way. That that's way to, that's a good way to put it. I, yeah, and he tries to manipulate. <laughs> that's a tricky one there. Well, I do manipulate a lot of different things, Ike. And if you get to know <laughs> us on our show, I'm a little crazy. But, uh, you know, we like to have fun. We like to laugh with our guests. This is not like a normal interview. We just, uh, you know, we like hang out and, you know, ask questions and just, you know, shoot the shoot the junk, Speedy. You know all hey, that. Hey, I hear that, man. Yeah. I hear that. But Speedy doesn't like to shoot the junk. He likes to grab the junk, right? Oh, Speedy. <laughs> Speedy. <laughs> Ike, I'm on your side. I'm, I'm trying to distract him, but it's still oh, okay. I got you. I got you. Anyways, uh, I'm just learning. so you know, we're, we're talking to former eight year NFL cornerback coach. Yes, DB coach Ike Charlton. Uh, if you don't remember him, uh, I do remember Ike. He was a really good cornerback in the NFL, and I followed him for all those years. And when Speedy told me that you were uh, coming on the show, this is the first time you're on a show, and I'm sure you're. You're enjoying it. Uh, my question for you is, uh, you look at this this coming season, and I, there are favorites. A lot of people, you know, obviously Kansas City winning a three-peat, but uh, San Francisco is another team uh, expected to be a really good team again this year. Uh, the Eagles adding Saquon Barkley, they're going to be explosive this year. Is there a particular team that stands out to you that can shock everybody and go all the way and win a Super Bowl? Uh, why not Philly? I mean, they've been there before. They're, they're battle-tested. Uh, the way they started the season last year, man, it, it was it was crazy, right? It looked like they were unstoppable. And then they just, you know, imploded at the end of the year. So with the addition, they picked up a good addition, another addition for, the, uh, for their offense, you know, with that with that in, in the division trade there, which which is unheard of, but it was made. But uh, I, I can see them, you know, contending because – Jalen Hurts will be better. A lot of the expectations are, again, where they, de- you know, it's been a while since they had a uh, someone de- uh, repeat in that division, but I think they uh, they can go ahead and, and and get back to the get the nod back in that division, man. Because the Cowboys, you can't trust them. You know, you can't trust them. And outside of them, I like I like the Ravens still. Mm-hmm. I like the Ravens still with the addition of of the big fella in the backfield. Yeah. Uh, I know they lost a big time linebacker, but they still have it. They still have a really good one in there, and uh, so I still like the Ravens to contend, man. You know, if they stay healthy, they'll be right there. So uh, the Patriots, I know you played for them briefly. I think you were there for one year in '06 or something like that. They've had a yeah, I was there for a little short period of time. Yeah, so uh, both Tom Brady and Bill Belichick have had uh, some drama-filled off seasons. We were just talking about uh, Tom Brady with the uh, broadcasting contract. He wants to buy stock in the Raiders. And Bill Belichick with the, all the coaching rumors that didn't come to fruition because Robert Kraft was trying to veto them. So uh, what are your thoughts to both of the crazy off seasons that those two guys have had? It's unheard of for that organization, for one. Uh, a lot of stuff that, you know, the, the attention is definitely warranted because of because of who they are. Uh, but a lot of a lot of stuff never got out of that got out of that organization the way it does now. Uh, you know, ever since twelve left, it's been a it's been a it's been a downhill spiral since then. Uh, he meant so much to that organization with with the things he did and you know the the caps, you know the taking the less money. So all that stuff factored in, and you know it's going to be hard to find another individual to do all the things that he did. Off the field, as opposed to the greatness that he presented on the field, right? So, uh, and, and and Coach Belichick, who I have a lot of respect for, again, I I think he's one of the goats to me. You know, the way he coaches defense, maybe he struggled down the line, and you know, when it comes to actually picking players, but uh, he he's drafted some, you know, some players that that has made some, a lot of plays and a lot of money and gold jackets, right? 
but to watch him coach football uh, defensively, uh, he's 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 right up there, man. Is in the goat to me. Oh, he's so, definitely he's definitely the goat. And I'm going to tell you this: why uh, he's, he's he's dating 25 year olds? I mean, who's, uh, who's hey it, hey I whatever he has to do to try to stay young, man. I don't think it's going to work. But um, he's popping a lot of Viagra pills. There's no question. Hey, that he salute, is. salute to coach, man. You know, hey, when you got a lot of money like that, like he has. You know hey. what I'm gonna do? I gotta send him some. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send him a you know case of Cialis or something like that. Uh, hey. Congratulations on on a hey. great retirement, my I'm, friend. I'm sure he has a he has a subscription. <laughs> He's hanging out with Robert Kraft. <laughs> <laughs> they actually made up. Oh, yeah, by the way, who would oh, you choose they? to hang out with? <laughs> Man, oh, that's a tough picture right there, buddy. Oh, that's tough, all right. Desha oh. Deshaun Watson, you know, he likes to, you know, likes his, uh, you know, his shank, uh, you know, grabbed. Uh, you have Robert Kraft. He, you know, he likes to hang out in those places. Antonio Brown doesn't know where the hell he is. And, uh, you know. Draymond Green likes to hang out on you know Snapchat, showing his you know. and uh, and kicking those places. <laughs> Man, it's tough. It is tough. Well, I don't know, you know what it is with these guys. With? Who would you hang out? with? Uh, who would I hang out with this group? Yeah. Let me see. I actually, uh, I know I, I spent a little time with Deshaun Watson when I was with the Houston Texans with the my uh, Bill Walsh minority uh, coaches thing. I was down there for a little bit. Talk, used to talk to him for a little bit. Uh, you know what? I'm hanging out with Robert Kraft, man. Mr. Kraft, I'm hanging out with him, man. He's the goat, man. We we PJ and we we Island, and you know he he hanging lives it up. Office? He lives it up. So I'm hanging out with Mr. Kraft. All right, man. So let's set that up. I mean, let's all go to him <laughs> and follow with Mr. Kraft on him. <laughs> Hey, hey I mean, Mr. Kraft, he, he keeps him a little young thing too, a lot too. Huh? I'm sure he does. I'm I'm just oh, gonna yeah. stay. I'm I'm gonna make sure that my table's a little way, from, you know, a little far from his because I don't. Want him to, <laughs> I, I have no interest in him grabbing me. <laughs> yeah, no, no chap, no staff action. No, no Speedy, you, you're all about the chef. I'm not involved in any massage parlors. <laughs> 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 I. We really appreciate the time. I know you're very, very busy. I hope your daughter is is getting better, and we will get you on very, very soon. Oh, man, I appreciate it, man. I have fun anytime. Oh, you're the best. Thank you. All, all right, you. thanks. All right, have a good one. Ike Charlton, a fantastic, great personality, good person, and yes. uh, a good dad. You know, he spends time with his daughter, makes sure that his daughter is healthy. Uh, we have one more segment, okay? I, I do want to finish it up. I want to get it in, Speedy. You know about getting it in, right? I don't know. You don't know about getting things in? No. I want you to slide it right in. You have to slide it in. No. You good with it? I don't know. Like a balloon, you know? God. You know, blowing a balloon? What? I put all, all the guys on. We, we, we got to get them on. Uh, in an interview with The Athletic, Jason Tatum said it was a lot dealing with being on the bench throughout the Olympics. He also said... Uh, his experience with Team USA was not what he expected. Tatum said all the debates of whether he was a championship caliber player and deserved to be benched during the Olympics was even more than he expected. He added that this was one. Uh, this was the first time since he started playing basketball at the age of three years old that he was never not on the court. The most minutes Tatum played in the Olympic Games was 17. Steve Kerr stepped down as Team USA's head coach last week, and either Tyron Liu or Eric Spolstra will, Spolstra will replace him. Steve Kerr was wrong. I don't care what anybody said. I don't care if they won the Olympics. They, they were embarrassed by Serbia, and, and the fact that they got over the hump because Steph Curry got hot at the end of the game. Um, Jason Tatum is the face. Him and Anthony Edwards are the two faces of Olympic basketball moving forward, Team USA basketball, and to not play him as much as they should have played him. I don't care, and I know what, and I, I and I know me and Keith are going to disagree about this. Jason Tatum is one of the top seven players in the league. He's one of the top seven players in the league. To only play him. As much, first of all, he he didn't play in two of the games, and the most he's played in seventeen minutes. Did he play well? No. Did he play in the uh, uh, well in the playoffs? No. But he's still one of the best American-born players right now in all of the NBA. And I know LeBron James and Steph Curry and KD 
are on their final run for the Olympic Games. I understand that. And they, they were out there to try to win gold for Team USA. But what is that going to tell these youngsters like Anthony Edwards and Jason Tatum in the future, four years from now, when they when Team USA is getting picked, Grant Hill is a part of the picking and says, Jason, do you want to play for Team USA? And he comes out and says, no, I don't want to play for Team USA. You disrespected me four years ago. I mean, this is what's going to happen. What happens if Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum says, you know what, I don't want to play for Team USA. And then they have to go reach. And we've seen this. Besides the Olympics, when the world championships, the Team USA is a shell of themselves because they put they put a team together that no, some of these players, yeah, they're good players, but they're not superstar players. And we never win. We never win the world championship games because our best players aren't playing in the world championship. They only want to play for the Olympics because they want to win a gold goddamn medal. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, these guys are the future of Team USA basketball. And when you don't play them or you don't pick them to be on the Olympic team, what does that say about Team USA basketball? It means that Team USA basketball is losing their credibility. And Anthony Edwards, you know, he speaks out. And you know, we've got, we had Tim Hardaway, Tim Hardaway on the show, and he took shots at what, you know, Anthony Edwards was saying. These guys think they could say whatever they want. They're free to say whatever they want now because they run the league. In those days, if you say something about Michael Jordan, you know what Michael Jordan is going to do when he plays you? He's going to score 52 on you. It's not like that anymore because LeBron James is running the league because he's on his hands and knees telling J.J. Redick, you're going to coach the team while I'm running the team. I, I just think basketball is falling off. The NBA is falling off because it's not run by the owners anymore. It's not run by the league. It's run by the players. Adam Silver doesn't even know how to run this league anymore. Yeah, he's bringing in these new, you know, these new, uh, you know, TV contracts. Me and you could bring in those TV contracts. It, internationally, it's growing all over the place. 200 and some odd countries. Why? Because of Michael Jordan and LeBron James. I just think that it, it's sad the way the AAU leagues are moving and, 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 and the way the Olympic team is being built, you know, being pushed. Grand Hill is running the Olympic team. I love Grand Hill as a player. He comes from Duke. I loved him as a player for five years before he got hurt. He was a sensational basketball player. People were comparing him to Michael Jordan. Everybody's trying to be compared to Michael Jordan, as Anthony Edwards is getting compared to Michael Jordan. None of them are Michael Jordan. None of them. And stop with the, this team could have beaten the dream team. It's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous statement. And Grand Hill, open your goddamn eyes. How the hell do you pick White over Jalen Brown? Oh, because he's a better team player? Oh, he played. That's great that he played. He played great as the point guard. Who do you want on your team? If you were to take a player right now, White or Brown, who are you taking? You're taking Jalen Brown. And don't tell me that. And then Paul Pierce, Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett coming out and saying that they would take Jason Tatum over Giannis. If that's the trick and that's that's the reason, why the hell wasn't Jason Tatum playing on, on the Olympic team? Why was he being sit on the bench when he's a top seven player in the NBA? I don't know, because Steve Kerr doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Meanwhile, Giannis is carrying that Greek team as far as he could. And that's why he stepped down, because he knows that none of those players are going to be. He was forced to step down. I'm just letting you guys know this. He stepped down because he knew that after not playing Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown wasn't picked on the team, that none of those guys are going to play for him in four years. So he had to step down. It's fact. It's a culture shock that I think Steve Kerr is just catering to his guy, Steph Curry, and obviously all, all the uh, Kevin Durant and these other veteran guys that, that worked for him. And they knows that this kind of thing is alarming. Now, obviously, Jason Tatum, you kind of had to expect that this media circus was going to come and whatever. But you, even so, like for him to like have these second thoughts about this and like stuff like that, it just says something about you're just like selective culture we were talking about it with kevin mentioned the baseball hall of fame like it's selective culture and this kind of thing is like we we're joking about with like lebron running team usa practically and steve kerr's just caterer gets because he has his two boys steph curry and kevin duran and they can just do whatever they want and it, it's gonna drag drive players down to do that joel Embiid's already gonna say all right i'm not gonna play for you next olympics you're gonna play for france you're gonna play for cameroon whichever one he wants to fish 
Look, it, it's it's something that you don't really see uh, that often when you have a star player of the caliber who just went to the to the Olympics and your third and fourth play above you, the best player on your team. And everyone's talking about it in the media. Everyone. It's embarrassing. And he it, he felt it. It, it. I don't think anyone's had a worse summer that could have been so successful in his career as Jason Tatum if I hadn't just witnessed what happened to Drake this summer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's because Drake is an idiot. OK, I've heard a lot yeah. of things about Drake. I have my my friend actually bounces out in Bridgehampton and he told me that Drake was over there and he that he says he's a selfish piece of garbage. He says he's all about himself and that when he walked into the place, everybody had to kiss his feet. So I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I heard that story. And, and, and again, I I know Drake. I've met Drake before. He was very nice to me, and one of the reasons because I know his DJ. I've been, I grew up with his DJ, so he was very polite to me. But I I could see, you know, he w- I've heard stories that he was such a good person, you know, getting into the hip hop game, and now he's just a piece of garbage because he thinks he's the best and, and that he can't be touched. But that's that's everything. Once you break through and you feel like your your personality changes, I don't. I would never do that. But there are people out there that their personality changes when they become some something special. So unfortunately, he, he Drake, got absolutely destroyed yeah, in did. that rap beef. This yeah. and he wants to restart it, and it's just not going to happen because well, Kendrick game, Lamar, was, you know, Kendrick Lamar, he's he's a, he's he's unique himself, you know. And I I I think I understand why everybody has a lot of respect for Kendrick because Kendrick is real, and Drake is not. And, and Drake talks about, you know, living in the ghetto. He grew up in Toronto. Give me a break. So, I, I mean, when he says he lived in the ghetto, I've been to Toronto quite a few times. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful city. Uh, there might be like one quarter of a mile of ghetto. I mean, you have to be very wealthy to live in Toronto. So I, I just, him talking about, you know, where he grew up. I've seen where he grew, he's grown up. Uh, it, it's it's all bull crap. So. He, just, he got three of like the best diss tracks I've ever heard dropped on him within a week. It's like getting dunked on by everyone on your team. It, that that's that's like the equivalent of what happened. It was just a dis- destruction. It, and it was some and and the last one is the song in the summer that he put out. It's not like us. It's playing everywhere. It's it's everyone's making TikTok videos to it. He, huh. This is an annihilation. Is Everybody wants to dance to it. I mean, how do you dance to a song like that? Because he put a little dance beat at the end to make oh. everyone dance on the on the grave of Drake. Think. I'm it a was dancer. Great I would dance to that track. I would. Look, even I've been out on Drake. I'll say this: I've always wanted to give this take. I've been out on Drake since day one when he his first line in his first song was something about he doesn't play on sprained ankles, and I swear to God, it was the softest line I've ever heard in my entire life. And when I personally would wrap my own ankle, like oh, like a sprained ankle, ain't nothing to play with. You You're so tough, saying? Drake. Do you know what he was saying when he says, "I, you know, I, I know. can't play on sore ankles because he's always on his hands and knees." Speedy, you know all about that, right? <laughs> what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, your Team USA did do a lot of questionable things. They did do a lot of silly things that we have discussed and whatnot. I definitely wouldn't have, um, you know, kind of treated Jason Tatum the way I, that it went down or whatever. But I don't know. In a certain way, with Jason Tatum saying it, it was a lot, the coverage and whatnot. I don't know. It's kind of coming off like he's a bit jealous, kind of like a big baby in a way. Um, him just coming off the NBA Finals after eluding him for so long, I get why it's like he wanted to just get right into the Team USA and have that championship mentality because it was instilled in him and integrated it for him for many weeks beforehand. But you know, like you mentioned in that one report you're reading, him not. This is like the first time that ever since he was a child he didn't step onto the court. <clears throat> I don't know. That that seems kind of useless. Would you just... accept the gold medal when you did nothing for it? No, I get, I get, I understand ex- exactly why it is that he's upset. But I get, and I, I like I said, I see why it left a, t- a sour taste. In do you, when you see Devin went... Booker played more than you do, and you're a better player than Devin Booker, would you be happy with that? No, I, I definitely would be. When you want, when when your like... your teammate White was playing more than you, mm. and you're a better player than he is, mm. and he wasn't even supposed to make the team. I just say no, yeah, no, absolutely. You know, I that like in the, in that sense, that's definitely a lot of things that Team USA did very questionable. But I do see Jason Tatum 
but like I see Jason Tatum being a face, like you mentioned, him, Anthony Edwards, Jalen Brown, they're all great players. But I don't know if you disrespected him enough to the point that he doesn't want to play next year. I mean, he most likely will. Four yeah. years, we'll see. I, I, I'll I, be very surprised if you see Jason Tatum on that team. I'm just telling you what I think. Yeah. I'll be very surprised if Jason Tatum is going to say yes to play for team. I know Jalen Brown won't. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. And that's why they got rid of Steve, Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr, I know everybody thinks that Steve Kerr did a great job. Steve Kerr embarrassed the young players. He embarrassed them. He threw them to the side and said, you know what? You're the youngies. You're going to be sitting the bench. I'm going to play who I want to play. And we're going to win it. We're going to win a champion. And barely won a championship, by the way. Barely. They shouldn't have beaten Serbia. I, I'm just sorry. They were getting their butts whipped by Serbia. Throughout that game until no, the fourth quarter, they did get lucky in that game. They did <laughs> in the last few, like the last of the fourth. I, I just, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry, but I, 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 I could see why Jason Tatum's upset. I wouldn't be happy either. Yeah, he was better in the Olympics because he did everything that they wanted him to do. It, again, if you gave Jason Tatum as much time on that court, I think Jason Tatum would have done just as much as Devin Booker. Devin Booker is a good player. He's not Jason Tatum. Stop it. He's not. Devin Booker is a great player. Is he a top 10 player? He's not. Jason Tatum is. He is a top seven player in the NBA. And to say that he's not is ridiculous. It is ridiculous, but he's not better than the Greek freak. I'm just letting everybody know. Anyways, that's it for our show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you to Ike Charlton for joining us. Thank you to our good friend, uh, Kevin Mench, for joining us. He was fantastic as well. Uh, had a lot of fun on the show tonight. Yeah, I, I, I listen, listen, Keith. I know they won. Good for them. They won because LeBron James again was running the Olympic team. It wasn't Grand Hill. It wasn't any of the you know the directors of Team USA basketball. It was LeBron James. Kawhi Leonard didn't play on this team because LeBron James didn't want him there. Jason Tatum didn't play in a lot of games because LeBron James didn't want him on the court. Those are the facts, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe Jose Canseco was hanging out with. LeBron James. It's been a great show. Uh, thank you to Fish. You've been fantastic. Great for your, your content. Your, your Obviously, your graphics are fantastic. Uh, Scoops, thank you uh, for your sports minute and uh, your content. Thank you to Ike for joining us. He's fantastic. Again, thank you to Mr. Mensch for being a Mensch. Uh, thank you again. Uh, we'll be back on Tuesday. Remember, Thursday night, we will be live at Miller's Ale House September 5th. It will be fun. We will air it, so you'll have an opportunity to watch us live on Thursday night for Thursday Night Football, Kansas City and Baltimore doing a live show in front of a live audience. We'll be very excited about that. Speedy, you're excited. Win eating contest, would you be a part of it? No. Why not? I have to deal with the show. No, but we are dealing with the show. But if we, we no a wing eating contest. No. You think you could beat me in a wing eating contest? No. Why not? Too much. I'm not doing fast stuff. Yeah, fast. You, you don't like doing things fast. No. Slow. All slow, right? Just regular. Normal pace. Rape, just normal pace, rubbing, everything. What? Yeah. Wings. <laughs> That's about making the wings, not what you're describing. Why? You wouldn't rub a wing? I'm not the one making the wings. <laughs> you rub sauce or dry rub is not sauce. That's the difference. <laughs> Just dry rub. Oh, I love that. <laughs> That's uh is that the Kansas Kansas City style barbecue, the dry rub? That's like where West a variation. Is from? Uh, that's a variation of it. I think there's other ones with it without within. Do you like country. dry rubbing? Dry rub is less sauce. It's similar types of just dry flavor. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's dry. It's a powder. It, it's a powder. It's a I don't know if it's power seasoning, like how you would describe it. I, I'm not like an expert with this type of. Are thing. you an expert with, with dry rubbing? No, I'm saying I'm not. <laughs> What's your favorite dry rub? I'm trying to think. Mm. So think I haven't. I haven't. Favorite. I haven't had it much. Mm. Um, I figured. No, yeah, it's harder to find dry rub. Like dry rub barbecue. It's hard to find dry rub is, barbecue really in general. Yeah. Dry rub barbecue in general is harder to find. It's harder. Yeah, no, it, yeah, it's, it's very it's more, more of an I wouldn't say a newer concept, it, but no, it's not new. It's old, but no, 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 no. It, no. it's new compared to wing sauces. Yeah, but it, it dry rubbing is new to you, right? Well, yeah, I don't like fish said. I don't live in Kansas City or or Nashville <laughs> or places like that. 
Uh, yes, uh, I do like Caribbean. I do like Caribbean. Yes, James, I do. I do like Caribbean. That is one of my favorite. Yes, Carl, try Rob. That's what we're talking about. All right, that's it for our show. I'm going to say good night, and we'll talk to you next week. Good night, everybody. <laughs> it is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network.